Hi guys! Hey, I'm starting with a picture of the final product first so I can put in my shameless plug asking you if you're interested in buying a Glowforge. Use my link in the description. You'll get a discount. You'll get $100 off a basic, $250 off a plus, or $500 off a pro model, and then I'll receive the same as a referral fee from Glowforge. Okay, enough with the plug. Let's get on with the video. Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. On today's video, I'm gonna do a quick little project on my Glowforge. I made these jack-o'-lantern earrings recently, and I sent a picture of them to one of my sisters and she really liked them. Since I'm seeing her soon, I thought I'd go ahead and make a pair for her. Now for this project, I will be using scissors, needle nose pliers, my jump ring tool. I have a black, metal jump ring that I'll use, and then a black fish hook. The way I do this is I start with just a plain, thin piece of wood. This is eighth inch, I think it's called common plywood, but it's eighth inch plywood. It's not the underlayment. It's a little nicer than the underlayment that you can get at Home Depot. And then I just cut them up in sizes that I want to put in my Glowforge. Some of them are smaller like this. Some of them I have up to the size of the bed of the Glowforge. It really just depends on what I think I'll use them for. Then I painted it using this paprika colored Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch two times ultra cover. This has the primer built into it. I painted both sides. So this is the front side, this is the back side. The back side's a little bit more rough. You have to determine which side you think should be the front and which should be the back. And I like this for the front. When I use my Glowforge, I like to use a masking tape to protect both the front and the back from scorching. Now, if the back doesn't matter, let's say I'm cutting out words and I'm going to glue them onto a board the back doesn't matter, I would skip taping over the back. But in this case, you might see the backs when the earrings dangle around. So I'll tape the front and the back. I got this off of Amazon. It's a huge roll and I'll link to this in the description. Now, I think I'll just go ahead and tape over the whole thing Okay, I'm going to start with the back though, because I like to overlap the front a little bit more than what I do the back, so that when I put it on the bed of the Glowforge, I can use the tape, the excess tape on the outside, kind of adhere it down to the bed of the Glowforge. So notice, because you can kind of see through this, I have a little excess here excess here. I'll have a little excess up here and on this side as well. This masking tape or masking paper is a true paper product. This is not vinyl and I've read that you would not want to use vinyl as your masking material, that it'll melt. Now the last thing I want to do before I put this in my Glowforge is I want to measure how thick this is with the masking paper on it. So I use these digital calipers that I got off of Amazon. They're very inexpensive. You have to make sure they say zero when this is pressed all the way to here. So if it doesn't, you just press this little yellow button that says zero and it zeroes it out. Like mine had a negative sign. I don't know why, but it was still on zero. So you just take your product and put your calipers on it and then close them firmly, but don't squeeze super tightly. This says 0.11. I think in some places it's going to say 0.12. There's a 1.2. So I will use the setting of 0.12 inches thick when I cut this. So I'll put this on the bed of my Glowforge, and then I'll move to a computer view so that you can see what I'm doing. Here you can see the bed of my Glowforge, and you can see that the orange piece of wood that's been masked off is on top of it. I want to go ahead and blow this up just a little bit so I can see it better. 
Okay, and like I said earlier, you can kind of see through the paper, so you see those pumpkins under there. You know to stay away from that area. I want to go ahead and import my artwork. I'm going to say Upload. Here's my image. Go ahead and choose that and bring it on in. Now my image came in as three layers, and that's simply because of how I saved it in Inkscape. I have my main layer, the outline of the pumpkin, I have my face, and then this circle right here, even though it looks huge, it's not proportional over here. That circle in the middle there is this tiny little circle up here, and that is the cutout so that I can put my earring hardware in. So I'm going to highlight the whole thing, then when you see these crossbars, you can move your entire image. And unfortunately, I don't have a r enough room for two layers unless I would offset, and I'd waste so much material if I did that. So I'll save this piece down here for something else. In the meantime, I'm going to copy that image and then paste it. And I'll paste it four more times. That way I have six and I can have three sets of earrings. Okay, the most important thing here is to make sure that your design isn't up into where a cutout has already happened. So I'll blow this up. It's a little bit hard to tell, but I feel confident that nothing is touching the shape above. I can actually move these up a little bit. Now you can see your measurements down here. If you want to change anything, that's where you do it. But I would always make sure that you like your design and the proportions of your design in your designing software and not in the Glowforge software. Just my opinion. Okay, so we are ready to go ahead and cut. The first thing you need to do is you need to select your material. So you click where it says unknown. If I was using what's called proof grade materials that you get from Glowforge, they would have a QR code on them. And I'll show you that in the next part of this video. If you use their QR code for their materials, then the Glowforge sets all your settings for you, and that's super nice. But their materials are more expensive than sometimes what you can find at Home Depot or materials you happen to have on hand. So in this case, I'm going to click over here, use uncertified material. And then remember, I was using the setting, material thickness setting of 0.12. So I submit that. Now, when you submit things, the camera readjusts and you might have to slightly move things. Like this one's pretty close to the side. I need to adjust and get it moved over a little bit. So I'll just move everything else over. Okay, I think that looks good. Now, since mine came in as three layers, I have to enter my setting three times. That, that's the downfall of bringing it in in more than one layer. Now, notice that what was grayed out, once I click on cut, it changed to an outline. Right now, it just doesn't know what I want to do. So once I click on cut, it changes to where it's going to have cut lines. So I enter my settings for this material. I'm going to use a speed of 200 and notice it's lit up over here. That way you know what layer you're working on for sure. And then I'm going to do full power and then it imported from my general setting the 0.12 inches. I only want to cut one pass. Now I'm on the little circle on the top of my earring. So I'll click on cut. So now that it knows I'm going to cut, I'll go down to manual. And I'll say 200 again for my speed and full power. Now that I've actually entered the settings, it is also lit up. My last one is the outside of my pumpkin. So I'll click down here on it. I'll let it know I want to cut it. Notice it's not lit up yet. I'm going to click on cut. Once I go down to manual and I enter my settings, then it will light up. So again, 200 full power and it's lit up. Now everything still looks good so I'm going to click on print. 
And for all six earrings, it's only going to take less than two and a half minutes. So if you were only making a pair for yourself, I don't know, it might take about 50 seconds, but it's very quick and very precise. So let's go into the other room and we'll watch it cut. Okay, now it's a little loud in here because I have my filter running. You need to either have a filter on or you need to run this, vent this out through a window. I did tell you I'd show you a proof grade material. And so this is some acrylic that came with my Glowforge. When you order your Glowforge, you get materials with it, as long as they're running that special. If this is in the bed, it will communicate with your Glowforge and your computer so that the settings are set for you. Okay, sorry about moving the camera angles. I was trying to get a better angle for you so you could see the laser actually working instead of just the aftermath. I can tell I made a mistake. I think it just scored or engraved around the pumpkins. And so without moving that piece of material, I'm gonna go back into my settings, see what I did wrong, and then we'll recut just the outside of the pumpkins. Okay, I don't have my mic on, it's downstairs, so this may not be great quality, but I did want to show you what happened. Look, I didn't move the power to full. So I'm gonna go back to this first one, and I'm gonna click this back button and say ignore it. I'll set it to ignore the hole in the top. Then I will set this to the correct power of full. So I was on cut but I was on 1% power. So now I'm gonna say print again. I'll go downstairs and hopefully this time it'll cut right through those. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we try to cut the pumpkins. Okay, I'm gonna turn my filter off. You'll see the difference in noise level. The humming you hear now is just the Glowforge. And it looks like these cut out just fine. This is just hanging on, it looks like, by the tape or the masking paper. That is just the masking paper. So you see anything that's left in there, that's, this is the backside, anything left in there, it's just gonna fall right out. So here's our little parts and pieces. You're just gonna finish taking the masking paper off. It's funny, sometimes it barely sticks and sometimes it's a little difficult to get off. Now sometimes you might want to wait and paint afterwards. I wanted to paint before because I really wanted the darkness of the singeing to show up to kind of help define the faces on my pumpkins. But that will vary by project and by your taste. So I'll put together one of these and then I'll show you a picture at the end.